I recently developed an indicator for Ethereum using the total value locked in DeFi with promising results. In this video I'll go over the Python code to compute it and show its performance. This is the total value locked and Ethereum closing price on a daily time frame. The total value locked or TVL gives us a measure for the utilization of Ethereum, how much money is tied up in smart contracts. Visual inspection shows that the price and total value locked tend to move together. Zooming in, we can see that the daily changes are very similar. Here's a scatter plot of the closing price and the TVL. They have an obvious linear relationship. The correlation between the two is about 0.8. The data for total value locked can be retrieved from DeFi Llama. They have an API and an endpoint to get the historical TVL of a given chain. Loading this data in Python is simple. First, we import requests, JSON, and pandas. We use a get request to call the endpoint, then use the JSON module to load the text into a dictionary. Then we use pandas to make a data frame from that dictionary. The data from DeFi Llama is on a daily time frame, so we read in Ethereum data for a daily time frame. All this code is available on GitHub. Let's talk about the indicator. We know from both looking and correlation that the TVL and price generally move together. The interesting information is from when they do not move together. To extract this, I look at the last n values of the price and the TVL, and I fit a linear model to predict the price using the TVL as the explanatory variable. To implement this, I built a function called rolling fit. It takes a data frame, an x and y column, which will be our TVL and closing price respectively, and a window length. Then get the current and most recent values of the close and the TVL. I elected to do the fit in log scale, as it resolves scaling issues if the fitting window is large. We use NumPy's polyfit to find the coefficients for our model, then finally predict the current value of the price using the current value of the TVL. And we exponentiate the result to get out of log scale and back to the normal price. This procedure refits the model for every bar in the data set, always using the most recent observations. Then we call the function and add the results as a new column. Here's the plot of the closing price and the TVL predicted closing price. They're quite similar throughout the dataset, but the interesting information is when they are different from each other. So to finish the indicator, we take the difference between the actual close and the predicted close. I divide the difference by the average true range to normalize it. I chose an average true range with a look back of 30. The look back isn't terribly important, just long enough. And here's the indicator series we get. We can see that it becomes less volatile as time goes on, meaning the price deviates from the TVL much less now than it did before. Before I show how this indicator performs, I need to point something out. The entire premise of this indicator is that the TVL has some effect on the price. The TVL data we have goes back until September of 2018. If we look at the Google trends for decentralized finance, we see that no one really started caring until about June 2020. Further, the average TVL before 2020 is about 33 million, where the average TVL 2020 to present is 56 billion. So I think it's reasonable to expect the indicator to not perform as well during these earlier times when DeFi wasn't very relevant. To judge how this indicator performs, I first compute the percentage change of the closing price for the next day. That way we can compare the current indicator value to the future price change. I multiply the percentage change by 100 so it's easier to read. Because the aforementioned reason of DeFi not being as relevant in earlier years, I looked at the performance of the indicator for the whole data set and each full year. So I compute the Spearman correlation between the next return and the current indicator value. And I compute the mean next return for the indicator above and below various thresholds. Here's the performance tables we just computed for our indicator with fit windows of 7 and 14. The first column shows the Spearman correlation between the current indicator value and the future daily return. The remaining columns show the average daily return when the indicator is above and below various thresholds. The Spearman correlation is negative across all years in both lookbacks. The consistency is good to see, but the magnitude of the relationship varies heavily across the years and lookbacks. The fitting window of 7 appears to be much better than 14 because the correlation has higher magnitudes, meaning a stronger relationship. 2019 performed much better than I expected, perhaps the TVL had an effect on price in that year, despite the lack of general interest. 2020's performance was overall lackluster, but 2021 is truly impressive. An indicator showing a correlation magnitude above 0.2 with future data is quite rare in my experience. 
The indicator above and below thresholds show high returns in both directions. The TVL clearly had an effect on Ethereum's price this year. And 2022's performance is quite disappointing. Perhaps the general bear market overrode the influence of TVL. Overall, I think the results aren't convincing enough to build a trading system based exclusively on this indicator. Perhaps there's a secondary factor or filter to apply to decide when TVL has influence or not. But the strong performance in 2021 is enough for me to keep an eye on this idea as DeFi continues to be built upon. This video focused on Ethereum's TVL because Ethereum is by far the biggest player in DeFi, making up 60% of all TVL. However, more recently, other chains DeFi is becoming more developed and seeing more total value locks. This indicator's idea could be applied to other chains like Tron, Algorand, Solana, Avalanche, Cardano, and so on. This is something I will definitely be paying attention to. That's all for this one. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, comment. Bye.